If you asked ten people at random what they know about Vincent van Gogh, they would probably tell you ten different things. He was an artist. Don McLean wrote a song about him. He loved sunflowers. He lived in a yellow house. Kirk Douglas played him in Lust for Life. He fought with Paul Gauguin. He cut off his ear. He went to an asylum. He painted the starry night. He committed suicide. All of these facts are true, but they only begin to sketch the broadest outlines of the tortured story behind the existence of this man who remains one of the central figures in Western art. Van Gogh didn't begin painting until he was 27 and died 10 years later. But during that brief lifetime, he created over 2,000 works of art, including the nearly 900 oil paintings on which his reputation rests. There have been many biographies of him which try to make some order of his life, assigning blame to his family and his strict religious upbringing. And there are numerous catalogues of his art, where you can look at the works in chronological order and try to use them as a key to break the code of his lifelong mental unrest. But what Massimiliano Sicardi and Luca Longobardi have brought here is something completely different. To begin with, it's not a conventional art exhibition where the paintings hang on a wall while you walk by them and connect the dots in your own mind at the end. It is a unique combination of art, music, cinematography, and immersive theater that Sicardi has been developing for nearly 30 years. From humble beginnings with a single slide projector to the technical wizardry you're about to experience. This is called Immersa Van Gogh with good reason. The projected images and haunting musical soundscape will surround you and make it impossible for you to react passively. You will not be presented with completed works that you can study dispassionately. Sicardi wants you to understand, no, to feel, what the act of creation must have been like for Van Gogh. Images assemble themselves before our eyes from darkness, with a line here, a splash of color there, until the painting finally reveals itself. And all the while, Longobardi provides you with music that stirs your senses further. Sometimes classical, sometimes original, sometimes from the world of modern song, dipping into sources as diverse as Edith Piaf and Tom York. Is it presented in chronological order? Yes. And no, there are 14 segments, Van Gogh's Stations of the Cross, as it were. And though the overall arc of the presentation passes through the major places of Van Gogh's career, Antwerp, Paris, Arles, the paintings do not necessarily appear when they were created. Rather, it is as though we see them when they emerge from Van Gogh's consciousness at a particular point in time. And when is that point? Could it be in the last moments of the artist's life, or during the day-to-day -day struggle that existence became for him in his final years? Perhaps the answer can be found in Van Gogh's own words. I dream my painting, and I paint my dream.
After a frustrating year studying at the Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp, Van Gogh finally broke away to Paris, where he moved in with his younger brother, Theo, who was to be his financial and emotional support for most of his remaining life. The years in Paris were an important time of growth for Van Gogh, but his heavy drinking and constant socializing wore on his health and his relationship with his brother Theo deteriorated. For all those reasons, Van Gogh moved 600 kilometers to the south to the town of Arles, hoping the climate would improve his health and dreaming of what Sicardi calls a big hope gathering a community of painters under the light of Provence in order to create and grow together. Van Gogh only lived in Arles for 15 months, but it was the most creative period in his life, yielding 200 oil paintings and over 100 drawings and watercolors. He became obsessed with Gauguin joining him there to establish their colony of artists and leased the famous Yellow House. The two men painted together happily for a while, but before very long, their relationship grew strained and Van Gogh threatened Gauguin with a razor. On December 23rd, Gauguin checked into a hotel, fearing for his safety, and that night Van Gogh severed his own left ear with the razor. Van Gogh committed himself to the saint paul de Mazol asylum in Saint-Rémy. Van Gogh seemed to improve during his initial months in the asylum and painted some of his most famous works, including The Starry Night. His condition soon declined, but he still left the asylum after a year and moved to the Paris suburb of Auvers-sur-Oise. He found himself drawn to the wheat fields, writing to his brother Theo that he related to their sadness and extreme loneliness. The canvases will tell you what I cannot say in words. Finally, on July 27, 1890, Vincent van Gogh shot himself in the chest with a revolver and died just over a day later from an infection. According to Theo, the final thing he said was, the sadness will last forever. But Vincent was wrong. Within a decade, international exhibitions had made him a highly esteemed figure in world art, and, as more became known about the tragic circumstances of his life, his painfully empathetic work served as an inspiration for millions of souls. He shows us that even the darkest night can be bright with stars. That the lasting power of Van Gogh's work is that we are witnesses to a life filled with passion and unstoppable desire, and we abandon ourselves into this timeless beauty.